Manchester City cruised past Arsenal to take control of the title race. It is in City's hands now. Arsenal still two points clear at the top of the table, but of course City do have those two games in hand. 4-1, it finished in that meeting that all eyes were on, a very dominant showing from Pep Guardiola's men. Let's welcome in former Arsenal player, uh -oh. Kieran Gibbs, uh -oh. to talk more about uh -oh. everything <laughs> in the title race. Kieran, how did it go so wrong for Arsenal? <laughs> I don't think it went wrong for Arsenal, Kay. Um, I think what we saw was probably, probably the most optimal efficient performance I've seen in, in the Premier League for a long, long time. Um, I don't think there was much that Mikel could have done. I think the, the, or the three other results would have hurt, would have hurt Mikel more than, than the City game. Um, I think the City game was just more of a learning curve, to be honest. There's been a lot of talk, Kieran, about the vulnerability of this Arsenal side, dropping points in games that were expected to pick up points and their mentality as well. And I suppose that's something that spans different eras too. How do you have a winning mentality when it has been so long since the title was won by Arsenal? Is that something you even saw in your time, that there was that vulnerability at Arsenal? Well, I mentioned it last week when I was in the studio and I said that the last uh, three results, like if they'd have happened sparingly throughout the season, um, I don't think we probably would have batted an eyelid, really. Um, you know, if the draw against Southampton was in October, the draw against West Ham was in January, um, I think it just it, it doesn't look as significant. I just think the timing of, of the results just magnify it a little bit more. Um, they're the only team that's come remotely close to City uh, this season. Um, they've come a long, long way. It's still not over, obviously, but um, you know the the strides that Mikel was taking this team in a short space of time. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot more other clubs in the Premier League that I worry about for the next over the next four or five years, other than Arsenal, to be honest. Obviously, you've been very optimistic for Arsenal's title chances this season, Kieran. This probably changes it for quite a few people right now. If you to split the percentages between Man City and Arsenal winning the title now, where does it stand at? Uh, well, obviously it's likely now and deservedly so that the best team will probably win. Um, I'm going to go down to 20%, 10%. 20 to 10, 10%. It's a big leap for 60, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Kieran, we all saw it. Does. <laughs> we saw Dan setting you up, don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, I, I said you off that one. actually, it's a drop-off. Uh, uh, OK. Uh, Let's take a look at the games remaining for Manchester City, though. If there are to be some dropped points here, it's a packed schedule ahead for Pep Guardiola's men. Sandwiched in between those, obviously, they've got to deal with Real Madrid and the Champions League. Anything that stands out to you, Stevie, in terms of where points could be dropped by City? Um, not particularly. I mean, Fulham kind of tailed off. West Ham, they're, what, fifth bottom for a reason. Leeds, fourth bottom for a reason. Everton, <laughs> look as though they could go down. Chelsea, can't, oh. can't score a goal. Brighton look as though they've lost their mojo. And you know what? Maybe Brentford away. Because Brentford can, can put up a fight against anybody. But before Brentford, I don't, I don't see where they, where they slip up. Uh, Ali, can you give Kieran some hope, please? <laughs> uh, no, I cannot. Uh, Come on, Ali. And they've got it one. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's the other thing. What I was going to say is that while we focus on Manchester City and say, where are they going to drop points, Arsenal got to figure themselves out, first and foremost. This is a team that over the last four games has given up 11 goals. So defensively, they have major issues and major concerns. They got to go to Newcastle. And if you've seen Luka Newcastle play lately, man, they're flying. And they can create mismatches in the attack. They can score goals, which they weren't doing exactly flying and dynamic in the first part of the season. They were finding ways to win games. Now, not only are they winning games, they're being dominant and explosive in the attack. 
Arsenal has struggled with that and has struggled against teams that actually don't score goals. They've struggled against them too. So they're giving up too many goals. Uh, I don't even think that Arsenal is going to be perfect from here on out either. And so that's going to give even more room and more leeway for Manchester City to be able to drop a point here or there and still have enough. All right, negative City Nellies. Can... Well, well, hold City, on a can... Hold on. City can lose a game and still win the title. I mean, so they've got to slip up. I mean, they can, they can afford to draw three games. They can afford to, to lose a game. So, I mean, you talk about it. This is not the driving seat. I mean, they're in complete and utter total dominant control. And, uh, now, <laughs> I mean, seriously. Dominant control. I, I, will say, I will say as well that while you refer to us as negative, negative Nellies, Nellies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the opposite of that? Because that's exactly what Kieran has been. You ask Kieran about what went wrong, he said, well, nothing went wrong. What? <laughs> what? What do you mean nothing went wrong? Positive Paul. Yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, how about deflecting away from Arsenal and paying all sorts of tribute and compliments to Manchester City, and rightfully so. But there are things that went wrong for Arsenal and have been going wrong, not just in the Manchester City game, but there have been signs that this could happen. We saw it in the three draws in a row, and it all culminated in being spanked by Manchester City. All right. Kieran, can you give some positivity then, given that we have just seen what's ahead for Manchester City, we know some of those teams that they have to face are fighting for survival as well. Is there anything that stands out to you in their running? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Negative, <laughs> Nelly. There's not, there's not. And it's not to say that... At least he's been honest. It's, it's, it's no uh, yeah, disrespect 20% went down to 10%. Uh, Kieran, <laughs> what we do know, though, is in the summer they're going to have to strengthen. Which players do you think we'll see moving on from this Arsenal side? Um, well, I mean, listen, first of all, like, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about Arsenal needing to strengthen, by the way, for the record, and I'm, I'm not trying to deflect Ali, um, <laughs> but, but it's, it's, probably, it's probably worth pointing out that, you know, we're talking about Arsenal strength, strengthening, and, you know, they're the only, they're the only team that's, that's probably in the same stratosphere at the moment than any other team and so if, if they need to strengthen I mean Lord knows what what all of the other clubs have to do over the summer um, because they're you know pretty much all of them are completely miles off of uh, anywhere near City and Arsenal this season um, so for me I would say middle of the park I would like to see uh, another another Thomas Thomas party type player. Uh, I think that that will bolster the midfield and just get some more legs in there, some physicality to deal with the demands of the Premier League and you know these giants like City. Um, maybe another striker up top as well. Um, Any names? <sighs> I mean, I'd like to, I'd, I wouldn't mind an Ivan Tony. I wouldn't mind an Ivan Tony, I think, or even a, a Calvert Lewin, probably pick, pick him up for a bit cheaper if Everton go down. But someone like that, I would say, um, a threat in the air uh, and just bring something different, just bring something different. I would say a, a player with that kind of profile. Middle of top. the park, obviously, Middle of the we've park, heard. Middle of the park, Declan Rice, Caicedo. These are names we've been hearing linked with Arsenal. You probably wouldn't be too upset to see that, Kieran. Oh yeah, no. I really like I really like Caicedo. I think he's I think he's uh, taken Brighton to another level. Um, I like Declan as well, um, but I think Caicedo would probably be my my preferred choice in in the middle of the park. I know that uh, that's uh, something that you've said yourself as well, Caicedo. Hi. Good yeah, team. absolutely. Yeah, I think I think no question. Somebody beside Party, um, you know, Sh Granite Shaka has had an unbelievable season, but if Arsenal want to push on, unfortunately, I don't think Granite Shaka is going to be the guy that pushes them on. And I think without a shadow of doubt, the biggest problem that Arsenal have had is when Saliba got injured. You know, in the last four games, they've lost eleven goals. They were nowhere near that any stage during the season. So 
they have to find another Saliba to play alongside him. No question. So that you've got Saliba and another dominant centre-back and then you can bring on Gabriel if you need to give somebody a rest or you need to play somebody in the FA Cup or something like that. Any name? That's... Well, and see, it's not really about the names. It's about the money. You know, you're talking... Liverpool's a great example. When Liverpool went around and they got, they got Salah for 35 and they got Mane for 35 and they got, they got all these guys for like 30 million, what they did was, once they'd built that core and that foundation, they went out and splashed the cash on Alisson and Van Dijk, both at, what, 80 million apiece. Now, as, if Arsenal want to compete with Man City, that's what they've got to do. They've got to go out, and I, and I kind of agree with, with, with Kieran... You need, a, you need another centre-forward, you know. Let's, let's be honest. Zinchenko and Jesus, they're two players that Man City didn't want, by the way. Man City thought that they weren't, they weren't good enough for their team. And as good as they've been for Arsenal, we've got to remember that. But again, it comes down to money. Can, are you going to spend £100 million on Ossiman? Can you do that? Do you want to do that? Is that how you're going to go about it? So it depends how they choose to go about it. If they choose to try and rely on the scouting, because they've done a great job so far, we've got to say that as well, but now to take the next step, you have to make a couple of big decisions and you have to get it right. Kieran, what do you make of the situation of Tierney right now? Obviously struggling for playing time. What do you make of what's going on with him at Arsenal? I really like Tierney. Um... He was probably Arsenal's best player not too long ago. And he's been unlucky with injuries. Um, but I think he's got what it takes to play at that level, in my opinion. Um, but th again, it's more keeping hold of these players because they're going to want to play regularly. You know, they're, they're still young. They're still um, learning the game. But you can tell that these players are all hungry to play. So I think it's a case of can he keep hold of them? Because I, I don't know if looking in the market, like, are you going to, just go and find another Kieran Tierney just like that. It's uh, it's not as easy as it probably seems. Did, well, we... did you notice the tone of aggression by Kieran earlier when... Aggression? Yeah, there was aggression. <laughs> I felt it. There was aggression. He even said, I'm not deflecting, Ali. Oh, hello. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> but Ali, you have, like, you think about it, right? The, the Arsenal's closest chance in the last however many years to win a league... And it comes at a, at a year that we probably see if if City go and win the treble, which we I don't know how close. Different opinions on how close or far away that is, right? In my opinion, it's not that far away. If they lift the treble, uh, the treble. In my opinion, it's it has to be the greatest Premier League team in history, right? So we can look at it as a, as a season that. Arsenal bottled the league, but for me, there's just something bigger going on, and it's you know the the dynasty that Pep has created in in City, and I think that that's what probably we would look back on in you know 10, 15 years from now as as the the, the greatest Premier League team to 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 grace the league. We got them. If you can't if you em. can't agree we if you em. can't agree with that, Ali, <laughs> we're not going to be friends, man. <laughs> We We're not going to be friends. Well, I, yeah, I knew there was aggression. I felt that, <laughs> Kieran. I got him. Kieran, just going with the defenders, is there any centre-backs you'd like to see coming in at Arsenal? Um, I, mm, I would like to have seen... Um, I mean, I don't know if, if, it's the, if it's probably too late now. I would have liked to have seen Dunk from Brighton. Come on for you. There you go. Well, there's, a, there's some thoughts to be made this summer, especially, but it's not over yet. That's right. Hey, guess what? Yet. Kieran, we can be friends, all right? It's OK. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.